Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today. We are delighted to have one of our partners with us, ADP. Rob and Michael will be presenting on ADP platform advancements, AI, and automation. And just as a reminder, we are recording this webinar and we will post it to our on-demand webinar library for you to review again or share with anyone. And you can find our library under our resources tab on our website at anovia.com. And we do encourage you to ask questions during our presentation. So please feel free to type them into the questions box and we will answer them at the end of our session. So now I'm going to turn it over to Rob to kick off our presentation. Hey Angie, thank you for that introduction. Um, my name is Rob Boyson. I've met some of you. Um, hopefully, you know, some of you may be at the Inovia conference last minute in Notre Dame. Um, I've been working with Lenovia since um, December of 19, since we started this partnership. Um, the ADP Inovia partnership has a, been a successful one. I think any of you that have joined us today that are part of that. You know, through this par partnership, we have some unique capabilities from a service, um, technology capability that we want to bring to you today and educate you on. As you may or may not know, ADP invests roughly a billion dollars, a billion with a B, in annually in our technology. So as you can imagine, we're continuously evolving how we do things, how we're making the solutions integrated, and you know, really making the practitioner and the employee experience an easier, I guess you could say, experience at all for them on both sides of that matter. Um, so today, you know, as you may or may not be aware, you know, we have that API connection through Microsoft Business Central, um, where we will provide information directly through, you know, our solution from the employee environment directly to your ERP environment with, micro, with Microsoft NAV 18 and greater. Um, but today, I think we really wanted to express being it open enrollment season for all of you maybe tied to the HR world, um, some unique capabilities that we've brought to the table in that area and more. Uh, just for a re recent enhancement. So today we're really on just brief agenda. We're going to focus on the practitioner experience, some of the value that we provided in there, just our release, new release updates. Um, from an ADP benefits capabilities, reducing the administrative burden and driving hard cost savings. Um, a new feature that's going to help you drive employee engagement, the voice of the employer feature. In addition to that, from the employee experience, um, you know, decision support. You know, a solution and a tool that's going to help reduce your employees by leveraging the ADP benefits module with the solution on an average of 13 minutes of an open enrollment process for your, for your employee. Um, you know, ex further explore that employee mobile enrollment experience, enabling all your employees leveraging the ADP technology directly through their cell phone, allowing them to enroll their insurance benefits, receive that information, and continuously review that information and make elective changes during the time. Um, you know, another feature is the ADP self, uh, AI self-service uh, self tool, driving efficiencies, alerting you and the employer, practitioners and employer, on many issues prior to they happen, prior to the payrolls run. And then lastly, as we've presented previously multiple times, you know, ADP is very proud of the data analytics solutions we bring to the marketplace. ADP pays one in, Amer one in five Americans. With those data sets, we bring you insights and capabilities from benchmarking that help you drive intelligent business decisions. And we're going to share some brief new capabilities in that area today as well. So that being said, you know, feel free to contact me at any point in any time. I'd like to pass the baton over to my specialist, Michael Sedano, who's going to drive us through the technology and some of these experiences. We encourage any of you to maybe raise your hand, ask any questions. Ask us to pause while we're actually demonstrating the live technology in a live demonstration. And of course, if you have further questions and maybe would like to maybe visit some of this technology in a more privatized one-on-one -on -one experience, feel free to reach out. Michael, the floor is yours. All right. Thank you, Rob. Um, I'm going to grab my screen and let me know when you can see that. I see it crystal clear, Michael. Perfect. So we're going to talk today about the practitioner side of, of ADP Workforce now as it relates to benefits and then also that employee engagement, like Rob said. I want to point out that directly in the system, we give practitioners access to tools that allow them to manage that open enrollment process. So directly within that ADP portal, 
as a practitioner, I can see I have 24 days remaining in my open enrollment period with around 350 employees that haven't yet started. So that's a little concerning for me as a practitioner. I can nudge those employees directly through the system and make sure that they're keeping that top of mind. We can do that same action for any of our new hires. So directly after completing uh, onboarding within ADP, I can send out and nudge those new hires, making sure that as they're going through that open enrollment process or that new hire enrollment process, that they're aware of the changes of the plans, as well as the timeline that we need to get these into the system. I do want to mention as well that benefit invoicing is housed directly within ADP. Carriers admit to a 3 to 7 percent error rate. Maybe we're getting charged for someone who has been terminated or, you know, we haven't yet added a dependent that was added into our system. I can pull these invoices and these are showing by carrier. I can pull these and it should match directly with what I'm seeing from that carrier. If it doesn't, I can pull change reports and understand a little bit more about what's going on. Hey, Michael. So this is sort of yeah. what you're referring to. I think some people also maybe understand this with EDI feeds, maybe in the insurance world. So what you're mm -hmm. saying really is we're able to actually transmit and audit those invoices, audit the, audit the employee counts um, automatically on the fly. So the, employee, so the practitioners themselves don't have to track that manually. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, providing those tools so that we can uh, quickly and easily do that reconciliation. Mm -hmm. So does that also happen when maybe, because in my experience when I've spoken with some other HR practitioners, does that also automate or update when maybe an employee's terms, because obviously we do, you know, we're by term, you know, by, by when employees may be termed, does that automatically happen too? Because I've spoken to some other HR practitioners and sometimes their experience is maybe they forgot to maybe send that notice to the carrier and they're still paying benefits maybe a few months after that employee's been termed. That's Have you experienced question. that? Or yeah. Yeah, so within the ADP system, using those carrier connections, which we have both EDI file feeds and also uh, our future state, and currently we're sending that information through API, so an instantaneous feed. Um, the idea there is to make sure that we're moving all carriers to API because we get that instant notification um, to the carrier. Everything is using effective dating, even using that file feed. So making sure that the carrier is aware of a termination, a new hire, or any other employee changes. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, one thing you mentioned, too, there, Michael, too, is effective dating. I know some other systems or some other HR members have, have mentioned that that's an issue. Can you define that a little bit further, what effective dating is and how that relates? Yeah. So on that EDI file, carriers will say, you know, we only accept file feeds on a Thursday. So what happens if we term an employee on a Monday? When we send out that file, it will show the file. It will show that the employee was termed on that Monday. And we're sending that information out on a, on a Thursday because that's where the, when the carrier will accept that file feed. They determine that. Um, but using that effective dating, you know, we're able to determine how much uh, premium is owed. And we're also passing that information over to the payroll side, whether it's for the termination or for the enrollment itself. Okay. So, so in a nutshell, if let's say Mike was leaving the organization, they gave his resignation. I gave him two weeks. Today, I'm actually able to put that effectively. So, in two weeks from now, he's going to be terminated. So, what happens then is the system will terminate that employee in two weeks from now, send a communication to the carrier, cut off. Mm -hmm informing them they're no longer employed, and then also adjust from the payroll standpoint, all by just create, by just through one step. Correct, and that's the power of having everything in one system of record. Great, thank you. Thank you for that. I just wanted to bring that up because I've heard of that as an issue with other HR practitioners. Yeah, no, that's a great point. I also wanna point out too that directly within our tool, we have a chat, live chat box, you're getting a live representative familiar with that area of the product. So we're in benefits. It's going to load up a benefit specialist. We can ask a question, you know, how do I trigger that notification? Or I have a question about this plan setup. 
I can communicate using that live chat. Uh, instead of getting on the phone, I can get a, a quick response here through that chat function. So just pulling, calling out some of the additional tools that we have on the practitioner side. Now, for voice of the employee, this is something that we can log in, and we house this within HR because it's employee engagement. Going into the voice of the employee here, I can see that we can send out surveys. We can also broadcast information out to the employee. So for broadcasting, let's say, maybe we have a snow emergency and we don't want anyone to come into the office or into the location today. So we can broadcast that out. We can also create surveys and ask our employees about, you know, how was your experience with onboarding? What do you think about our benefits package? These surveys are custom, are custom build, but they're also backed by ADP Research Institute, which does a lot of research in determining what kind of questions we need to ask to get valuable feedback. We were just in benefits, so we can send out that benefit survey. I can customize and add additional questions, um, or I can use the CAN survey here. So I can type in, you know, benefits or benefit satisfaction. I can add my own questions, but we can also see here how satisfied are our employees with their, their medical plan. Uh, and then going through each line of service, vision, uh, short-term disability, et cetera. Uh, again, at the end, we can say, you know, what additional benefits would you add to the package? Um, and do you feel like we're doing um, a great job of contributing positively to your health and wellness? Now, so can we, uh, uh, so, yes. I was just going to ask, you know, regarding these, regarding these surveys, how, you know, in your experience, you know, how are they being, you know, what, what leverage aside from a benefits perspective, you know, are, are you using it to, or are you seeing this, Michael? I mean, I think it's a great tool where practitioners can, you know, drive an engagement experience per se, um, mm -hmm. in addition to all their benefits. Are you, are you experiencing maybe other avenues to maybe leverage that, a survey creation as well? You know, what options yeah. are available for, the, for that practitioner? So we have engagement, we have exit surveys, onboarding, benefit, benefit satisfaction like we showed, candidate experience, um, and then we have additional ones uh, coming down the road. You know, our idea is to build out these different surveys so that we can get feedback and, and also engage the employee and what's being done on an employee uh, and company level. You can also, uh, down the line, create your own custom surveys. So making sure that you can send out your own questions and get feedback for that as well. Uh, the feedback is displayed in graph form so we can understand you know, how favorable or unfavorable, unfavorable our employees are responding to those closed surveys. Interesting. And, and let me ask you this, how are these surveys Present it to the employee? You know, what avenues do the employee get access to these surveys? That's a great question. So when we launch a survey, the employee is receiving a notification, hey, we have a few questions for you. So they receive that push notification and then logging in um, directly from their smartphone, you know, how is your new hire onboarding experience? And it lets them know also that this takes an average of four minutes to complete. We can see we have 16 questions there. And then I can just walk through that experience. I can say, um, you know, I strongly agree. And then just continue to walk through those questions. I can also leave additional feedback at the end where we have those open-ended questions. Okay, so, so, it's, so it's not just through email. This is also sent directly to their cell phone through the ADP app, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And that's what that's we great. find has the most engagement because, you know, we don't always check emails, but our phone is something that we're on quite a bit uh, of the day. So being able to push this out to the employee and have them have immediate access, we're more likely to get responses that way. Great. great. That's, that's, yeah. that's awesome. Thank you. And so, um, you know, additional items as well. The, the ability for our employees to enroll um, in benefits. And so now switch shifting gears, we showed that employee voice of the, uh, we showed the employee walking through their survey in voice of the employee. 
Now we'll show the employee walking through that benefit enrollment. So here we can configure welcome messaging, letting the employee know of any prior changes or you know, maybe this year we've added an HSA. So just making the employee aware. We can also add contact information here, um, letting the employee know this is who I should reach out to if I have any questions. And Rob explained this earlier, we're seeing around roughly 13 minutes for an employee to complete open enrollment using this system. So this is embedded within the ADP software. Once we have these elections, we're using that effective dating that we talked about earlier to pass the deduction over to the payroll side. We're also passing the election over to the carrier. So you know, pretty much a hands off when we're using this technology. We're also collecting dependents and beneficiaries in the very beginning, making sure that they're included as we're going through and uh, selecting those benefits, asking questions about tobacco usage. We can also create our own custom questions here if we need to ask our employee set uh, any questions before getting into that enrollment. So, so those surveys, Michael, to pause really quick, what's the advantage and what we've we seen the advantage uh, enabling them from uh, from the employee experience, and maybe how does that look like administratively, maybe from questions to the practitioner, in your opinion? Yeah, so those surveys are optional, and they're generally geared at getting more information that's required for the enrollment. So, you know, in this example, we're asking the employee and their spouse, do they use tobacco? Because it impacts the price of the premium. Um, you know, here at ADP, if we use tobacco, I believe that's a $50 surcharge um, per month. So just making sure that we can understand that so that we can charge the employee appropriately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, it's, so in a way, it's sort of expediting the enrollment process by these survey questions are enabling, are basically enabling the employer what decisions they are based on, based on their decision, based on their life. On, their, on how they correct in decision okay correct and all of this information then feeds into our decision making tool uh, here we take a four-prong approach to benefit selection we're asking about benefit utilization the employee's health factors lifestyle routines and financial status uh, so as the employee walks through this and gets started we're pulling in salary information but also asking about spousal salary um, asking for the current plan so that we can see the current spend versus the deductible. And typically employees are estimating that they spend anywhere from $500 to $1,000 less than they actually do. So this is really taking out that guesswork and making sure that the employee can plan for the future by contributing the appropriate amount to an HSA um, or just being aware of what their goal is to that deductible. We're also so so it's questions. pulling. Yeah. I was going to say, can you back up to that last screen? Yeah? I was going to say, so it's actually pulling the information um, from ADP, correct? When it maybe brings some of that deductible information from the past experiences, is that correct? I'm just just wanted to understand a little bit more where the deductible information is coming from, right? Um, or or from our audience carrier. want to know that too? Yeah. Okay. And that's because we have mm -hmm. the carrier connections, right? Correct. Yep. Okay. That is correct. Right. Yeah. Thanks. And this is I all mean, I think powered it's just by important for them to know. Yeah. And this is all powered by NIA. So, um, you know, the, this, this tool is used widely. Um, they have patented machine learning, and it's fueled by over 3 billion external customer data points, over 20 million claims, and over 6,000 networks. So there's a lot of different information that's feeding in and out of this tool using APIs. Great, great. Thank you for that. I just wanted to maybe be able to like understand how that data is being presented to the employee. Yeah. Uh, and then asking questions about that employee. You know, how many primary care visits do we have? Um, who is our primary care provider? And then using AD APIs to determine is that in is that primary care provider in network? You know, maybe as an employee, I see a cheaper plan, but if my primary care provider is not within that network then it's going to be more expensive for me in the long run. So really helping that employee make that decision. Uh, lifestyle choices, how do I get to and from work? I use a bicycle. And so using this, we're, uh, we're actually going to 
recommend accident insurance because you're statistically more likely to be admitted into a hospital if that's your primary way of getting into work. Um, you know, uh, it's really a, funny you mentioned that, Michael. <laughs> it's really funny because, like, I was under the impression that they'd be a more healthy individual, right? A healthy lifestyle, but mm -hmm. their actual commute is a little bit more risky as opposed to a car, right? But you don't think yeah. about that. Right. And it's and it's oftentimes things that we don't think about that the tool is triggering as the employee is walking through that enrollment. Um, in fact, we generally see about a 47 percent average lift in voluntary benefit participation overall when using this tool because we are recommending these additional services. Uh, and about 75 percent of the users accept the recommendation provided by the tool. Um, you know, exercise again, those lifestyle questions. Um, do I and do I have any underlying conditions? Um, medications again, scanning for cost and affordability. Um, vision, dental. We want to make sure that we're covering all of these bases. And then we also can run a financial check. So this is something that we can leave on or off. Um, the employee can skip this and add these expenses manually, but going into that affordability, you know, how do I, how am protected do I feel against large med medical bills? Um, do I rent, own, or neither? And then my, my financial wellness. And again, these values can be added or we can pull them in using that soft credit check. Uh, and then once we have this information in the system, we are going to highlight just a broad-based idea of what we're recommending. When the employee goes in, they can then see the specific recommendations. I can also click into the plan and understand why it's been recommended for me. So it includes your primary care physician, the lowest premium, HSA compatible for your rainy day funds, and so really highlighting the specifics of why we're recommending that plan. I do want to mention, too, that this information is also available in the ADP mobile app. So we can have employees go into ADP and enroll in benefits the same way that they would through that PC, but we're giving them that experience on their mobile device. All of this is web enabled. So if I, you know, I'm often leaning on my spouse to help me make these decisions, I can go home and I can have this conversation with my family, the people that it impacts. I, I, I have to share something really here. It was really cool too. You know, my first time being with ADP three years ago, you know, I didn't have my insurance card yet and I have three individuals, three children. Um, but it was really, you know, obviously you don't get your insurance card. You got to wait in the mail. It's, it's really cool and convenient for you to have the ability to pull this information directly from your cell phone. So now of course my, my, ch my child was sick, I was able to pull, my health insurance information, my group member ID, and everything from a prescription standpoint without having my health insurance card because it's all readily available on my cell phone through the ADP app, which was really convenient. And that's the idea. Convenience, visibility, having the access directly in my hand. Um, you know, when I log into the ADP mobile app, the first thing I'm going to see is this intelligent self-service cards that have been provided to me um, that are letting me know about things to do. And of course, as a manager, you know, I may see um, scheduling requests or uh, en enrollment opportunities. So making sure that we call these things out under things to do. We also have embedded in the tool um, a virtual assistant. You know, how can I help you today? Maybe I need to request time off. I can enter that into the system. And then we're, we are um, processing that through a chat instead of the employee going in and physically entering that information on their mobile. No, that's, that's great. I mean, I think, Michael, you'd agree. I mean, I think everybody on the call would may agree that, you know, mobile is the way that the employees are engaged now. I mean, everybody's on their mm -hmm. cell phone, you know. So ADP's capabilities to provide a full HRS experience mobily um, is a value to any organization. Absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and and especially important too for checks and balances. You know, if I have a missed time punch, 
the manager is able to see that as soon as they log in and rectify it. So it's making it easier for our payroll practitioners, um, just keeping everyone on the same page. Uh, these action cards are personalized to me. They tell me what I need to do and help me to do it. It's fast and it's task centric. So, so is the employee notified of that in advance? I thought that's one part of our new self-service and employee manager prior to the payroll would be notified by, let's say, let's say I, I, I forget the clock in the morning, but I clock out in the afternoon. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. I, I would get a notification on my cell phone saying, hey, you missed a punch today. Is that, is that correct in my thinking? Yeah, it's proactive, um, making sure that, again, we're addressing those issues uh, before they escalate into something more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's that's a convenience because you know how many people have said, well, they got to do a one-off payroll cycle because they have an incorrect timesheet, or they, or the scramble of cleaning up a timesheet prior to running your payroll, right? Um, mm -hmm. That's that's more burden on the administrative teams. Exactly. Yes. Awesome. Uh, and so going into um, our, our our next topic. We're, we're talking about talent. So we mentioned, you know, that employee engagement and also that benefit enrollment. Um, here's where we can look for, at our talent market insights. So we're continuing to add to Data Cloud and advance what it does for our clients. Um, talent remains one of the top priorities for our clients. And so within our analytics and benchmarking tool, we've dedicated an entire page to that talent market insights. This is especially important if I am hiring for a new position. Uh, so let's say I want to find an IT manager. I can type that into the system. It's showing me a ton of information about that IT manager, including tasks and certifications that we need to be aware of. Um, so things that we're looking for. I can also see the um, the workforce distribution. So I can see where these employees are. Uh, it looks like the most um, IT managers sit in the New York, New York, New Jersey area, um, followed by Los Angeles. So I can see where that best talent sits if I am if I have a virtual workforce and I can help any of this. You know, I want to find out where that best talent lies. But I can also see how much I should be paying that individual. So I can go into compensation and see what is the, what does the base salary look like, or even go into a specific area. Um, you know, if I'm sitting in a certain part of the country, I can go into that granular area, and you can see as we're scrolling through. You know, now we're looking at the Philadelphia area. We're pulling this data from 323 organizations, whereas you know, if we sit from the whole U.S., we're pulling from over 10,000 organizations. So we can get pretty granular into that employee's pay, or we can do high level. You, you know, Michael, one thing I want to add to to this, and you know, it's something I spoke to at the beginning of our call. Is you know, I mentioned you know, ADP pays one in five Americans. You know, it's it's an extraordinary amount of data. Um, this salary information and survey is not based on surveys, as opposed to some of the other salary maybe benchmarking tools. This is, this is data referenced directly from ADP's payroll data, hence why we have our own jobs report that the Department of Labor leverages as well. So this data is not, I think it's important to understand that um, you know, ADP is evolving into a data company by leveraging this data and as, as Michael's informing you and demonstrating you, how it can be leveraged to make intelligent business decisions. And obviously I think you can see the value of that there. Absolutely. Um, and I, I did want to mention, too, that employee count when we type in IT manager, uh, 10,000 organizations, almost 24,000 employees. Um, we mentioned we pay one in five Americans. When we clear this out, it's actually showing us how many organizations that means and also how many employees that means. So almost 40,000 employees, or I'm sorry, 40 million employees um, and 936,000 organizations across the U.S. that we're pulling that data from, not survey data, it's anonymized aggregated data from ADP, and we are updating this on a monthly basis. So we're not looking at 12-year-old, I'm sorry, 12-month-old survey data. We're really keeping to the pace of the market. 
one additional thing that I want to point out too um, is the ability for us to mash up our data. So I can go into the system, we have connections with Power BI and Tableau. So if I wanted to take a look and understand, you know, how my budget compares to where we are actually, I can go into the system, I can pull in that information or I can add it manually, um, but then showing, you know, all of those specific metrics and then being able to compare, you know, maybe we're seeing over time and I want to know how that relates to our sales numbers. We can import that sales information from that third party system and then I can look at it here in ADP and get an understanding of correlation. And I want to make sure, you know, this is part of our announcement. We just actually, you know, demonstrated this, this Power BI connector, um, you know, at the May, you know, Inovia conference at Notre Dame. But it is a free connection. There's no additional cost for any organizations that are leveraging the ADP technology along with the Enhanced Insights module, which is our data analytics tool we're demonstrating to you. This is a free connection. In addition to that, with our partnership with Microsoft, we also have a free connection for Microsoft Teams. So, you know, we are mm -hmm. continuously evolving and continuously expanding our partnerships along with our technology offerings to the client as well. Yeah. Um, and I'll, I'll just close with the ability, the, the pink line here is information that we've imported from that third party system. Um, so we can see some some uh, disparities here between our sales number and our overtime, but I can also splice into specific time, so we can look at this over a timeline, or I can see a departmental breakdown of overtime, or I can go into a specific manager. You know, maybe we're trying to reduce costs, and I want to see which managers are spending the most in overtime, and then we can have a conversation with them. Uh, so over time, it looks like in our IT department, our research and development, um, our programs department, HR, and higher education. Uh, so we can have conversations with these departments about, you know, tips and tricks on how to pull that overtime down because it is costing the organization money. So visibility, I also can access this information from my mobile device and even be prompted on my mobile when there's an outlier. You know, maybe we're experiencing higher overtime in this specific department, ADP will let you know um, that that department is an outlier. All right. uh, and, and that wraps up our agenda for today. We'll open the floor if there are any questions um, or anything additional that we wanted to review. All right, thanks guys. Uh, we do not have any questions as of yet, but now is the time to get your questions in. Um, that way we can have Rob and Michael address them. While we're waiting on that guys, any last minute words you would like to to speak about? No, I, I, no, I think, you know, these are some interesting new technologies that we keep, um, you know, not reinventing ourselves, but improving the practitioner along with the employee experience. You know, through the ADP and Novia partnership, we have some unique capabilities and enhanced service from implementation to actually ongoing service as well um, to support you and your needs. You know, we're more than happy to work with you and work with any of the clients that may have some questions and understand a little further of what our partnership may bring to them from a HCM, HRS payroll standpoint. All right, sounds good. And as an employee of Inovia, we use ADP. Um, I have had no issues with it. It's very easy to use, uh, very user friendly. And um, I, yeah, I would have to agree the <laughs> onboarding does take about 15 minutes, a little bit longer if you um, have more in depth information to put in as far as, you know, um, beneficiaries, uh, dependents, mm -hmm. all that good stuff. So, but yeah, it's pretty, it's user friendly. Well, we're glad to hear that, Angie. And, um, you know, I know I think the, the ability to do almost everything you need to do from your cell phone is also a convenience for, for individuals such as yourself that are using it. So we're really pleased to hear that. Thank you for those comments. 
yes, I finally got the app working properly. I had a little <laughs> bit of struggle, but that was on my end because the passwords weren't lining up. So. Uh oh. Well, yeah, and uh, you know it's, it's convenient too. So, well, we appreciate that. But if there's anything you know that um, we can do, um, we're happy to. And you know, any any Anovia clients and partners out there, we're also happy to have a brief conversation. All right. Well, no questions have come through, but like I said, if you do have any questions later, uh, please don't hesitate to contact uh, your customer engagement representative here at Innovia Consulting, and we would be more than happy to further the conversation. Thank you, Rob and Michael, for the presentation today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And for everyone on our webinar today, or if you're watching on demand, thank you for taking the time out to join us. You can also check out our website for more of our upcoming events, and that's anovia.com slash events. And also check out our training workshop page, anovia.com slash workshops. We have a variety of workshops to fit your role, so check out the ones that are right for you and your team. And have you heard our latest Anovia Conversation podcast? We have a library of podcast episodes for you to listen to, and you can learn more on our podcast page, and that's anovia.com slash podcast. So check out that selection and subscribe so you'll get notified when those new episodes air. And we do have some exciting news about our conferences in 2023. So visit our conference page at anovia.com slash conferences to learn more. All right. Well, we thank you again for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you soon on another Anovia webinar. Take care, thank everyone. Thank you all, and have a great day. Bye-bye. Take care. Thanks, guys.